thought that was probably the case. Oh, you told me. I need to add something. Let's see. Oh, room in the end. Yes, room in the end.
Good morning. <laughs> Welcome. We joyfully welcome each and every one of you this morning to worship, whether you are joining from the inside of this beautiful sanctuary or through the wonders of the online world. I would invite you to turn your attention with me to the welcome statement that's on the front fold of the inside of our bulletin. Each week we turn our attention to these words to remind ourselves of our commitment. So let me share those with you this morning. Eastwood Christian Church Disciples of Christ seeks to be a people of grace and welcome to all God's children. We affirm the faith, baptism, and spiritual gifts of all Christians and we are glad to welcome into fellowship and service all people, no matter what race, gender, age, sexual orientation, gender identity, nationality, ethnicity, marital status, physical or mental ability, economic status, political stance, theological perspective. We celebrate that all, all are part of God's good creation. So I have some announcements for us this morning. We are collecting a special Thanksgiving offering today and next Sunday, which benefits higher education and leadership ministries in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. You, if you are here in the sanctuary, you will find the flyer and giving envelope in your bulletin. If you are joining us online and would like information, you can call the church office. We are also taking orders for poinsettias, which will decorate the sanctuary during Advent. That form also can be found in your bulletin. And if you want to make an order and you're worshiping with us online, you can call the office. Here are some of the happenings that are occurring um, at the church this week. These are, are listed in the bulletin for today. I will read through them quickly. Tonight at 5 p.m., the ECC Kids and Youth Group will meet. Wednesday at 7 is choir rehearsal. Thursday at 6.30 is theology on tap. Um, that information is also uh, found in the bulletin to email if you're interested. Friday, the Eastwood Christian Church is hosting, hosting Room in the Inn, and we still need some volunteers. We need two overnight hosts, someone who will bring breakfast for Saturday morning, and a morning driver. Uh, Sunday, we have the sexual abuse prevention training that will be here at 5 p.m. A little further ahead, we have um, a special intergenerational Advent Sunday School class. That sounds like such fun, and it will be led by Reverend Janet. That will begin the first Sunday of Advent, November 28th. Contact Courtney Pindley to sign up. And on December 5th, we will have our Song and Stories of Christmas service at 5 p.m. I know there's one more. Yes. That is also, so after church today, there is a congregational meeting, so please feel welcomed and do stay after the service for that. Uh, there is a meeting of the Organizational Structure and Communication Task Force on Tuesday evening at uh, 6.30 by Zoom. 
The Zoom link will be sent on Tuesday. Please contact Derek or Glenna should you have any questions. I think I've gotten all of the announcements that are in writing, but I do know that Mitzi Dickerson from Member, Member Care has a special announcement for us. Good morning. Um, I'm going to ask for a show of hands, and you online can play along as well. Who here has ever participated in the Thanksgiving baskets for shut-ins? So a few of you remember. Um, here at Eastwood, we're trying to find our new norm while also holding on to many of the traditions that carry tremendous meaning to who we are. One of those traditions is taking fruit baskets to our shut-ins in the week of Thanksgiving. I remember as our now grown children were young children, uh, we would bring fruit in after the Thanksgiving breakfast and then after we were completed eating breakfast, we would make up the baskets and then we would disperse the baskets among uh, people that were there and take them to our shut-ins. And that's kind of one of, one of the many, but one of the memories that I think uh, we and our daughters um, will always cherish, being able to take baskets to people who are mostly now our saints. Um, Grace Ellathorpe at that time was instrumental in making this happen, and now we have an opportunity to make a basket for her, as she is now one of our shut-ins. Um, so that's just a huge opportunity. Uh, and also, not just her, but for 12 others who have served this community of faith well over the years. I say all that to you because you now have an opportunity to help member care continue this beloved tradition. I would like to ask you to bring fruit, individual servings of applesauce or pudding or raisins, potato chips, fruit juice, nuts, candy, anything that you can think of that we could add to baskets for our shut-ins. We're gonna ask you all to bring items in, and you online are welcome to participate as well, but to bring stuff in over this next week at your convenience, and you can put them on the tables in the Serenity Sisters classroom. Saturday around at one o'clock, uh, we're going to meet in, this, in the classroom and put the baskets together so that they'll be available for you on Sunday morning to pick up a basket and take it to one of the shut-ins. Um, so, so that is what I'm extending to you now, is just simply the invitation to participate in any or all of these ways, to either bring items for the basket, leave them here, help us at one o'clock put the baskets together, and or deliver these. Um, again, I think it would be a great opportunity for, uh, for families to get together and help to participate in this. If you have any questions, you can contact myself, uh, Veronica Bland, Sharon Fretch, Gina Waters, Tammy Buchanan, or Steve Walls. Uh, we are the membership team. So um, if you would, please, I would appreciate your participation. Yes. We're making 13 baskets total. Yes. Can we donate money? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things you do not say no to. <laughs> Thank you.
please join with me in the call to worship that's found in our bulletin. Holy One, there is no God like you. In praise and thanksgiving, Through days of jubilation as well as dejection, help us realize your influence in the world. We are simply for spirit to do this. Eyes to see. We've now come to our time of prayer. Today we pray for our sister church, Community Faith Christian Church in Memphis. We celebrate all who have birthdays in our community this week. Susanna, Silas, Dita, Joe, Julie, Sid, Tim, Ferris, and Steve. We are thankful for the light you shine within our community and beyond. I invite you to take a look at our prayer list in the bulletin. You can also find the prayer list in the weekly email. If you have a prayer request, you can submit it through the weekly email or on the website. There's a link. With all that was mentioned, let us go to God in prayer. Creator of all, your blessings lift us, inspire us, sustain us, comfort and guide us. May we always be grateful for that which is before us. Open our eyes to the blessings we wander by on a daily basis. Gifts of the holy that we ignore or just don't see while our eyes are fixed on something we want rather than what you have already provided. May we have the courage and determination of the early disciples to answer your call and do what needs to be done even if it is dangerous goes against our social norms, or leaves some wondering about our judgment. We come to you with thanksgiving for that which has already been provided. We come to you confessing our sins against you and others by our thoughts, words, and deeds, things that we have done as well as those that we've left undone. We come bearing our gifts as we are able and pray that you will multiply them so that we may pay our staff, repair and re-outfit our education building, all to your glory and honor. We pray we would become the people you believe us to be. We ask that you be with the leaders of the world, open their eyes to peaceful negotiations and to care for our planet. The earth is crying. It is burning and melting and becoming dry, parched and barren. Open the eyes of the leaders of the world to find solutions to the problems we've all helped create. Open the eyes of each individual so we may steward this beautiful globe in our own small but important ways. Be with the leaders of our city and state. Help them find ways to steward the resources of our city and our state so that all people may experience good health, work, and purpose. We thank you for the gift of our lives and for the opportunity we have to come together to learn your ways, to be inspired by one another, and to grow in your word. Help us to realize fear, to release fear, and to live by faith. We lift the concerns of our congregation, heal those who are sick, give hope to those in despair. Bless those gathered and those who cannot be with us. Bless the efforts of our board and our committees as we discuss our budget. We pray you would guide our decisions and multiply our gifts. We ask all of these things as we come to you, praying the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. Let us listen for the Spirit of God found in our reading. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, tell us when will this be and what will be the signs that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But this is the beginning of the birth pangs. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
God loves a lullaby and a mother's tears in the dead of night better than a hallelujah sometimes. God loves the drunkard's cry, the soldier's plea not to let him die better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our misery, God just hears in melody. Beautiful, the best we are, honest cries from breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah. Woman holding on for life, a dying man giving up the fight, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. Tears of shame for what's been done, silence when the words won't come, are better than a hallelujah sometimes. We pour out our misery, God just hears a melody. Beautiful, the best we are, honest cries from breaking hearts are better than a hallelujah, better than a church bell ringing, better than a choir singing out, singing out. We pour out our miseries, God just hears a melody. Beautiful and best we are, honest cries for breaking hearts. Are better than a hallelujah. We pour out a misery, God just hears a melody. Better than a hallelujah. Better than a hallelujah. Oh my, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. It's a little bit like following you is like the foam after the wave. You know. so. I am fine. I have allergies that sent off asthma, that sent off bronchitis. And so I, I don't have COVID. I've taken lots of tests, I promise. Went to the doctor, got a test. But it just leaves me sounding like a cross between 70-year-old smoker Joni Mitchell and Ursula the Sea Witch. <laughs> so thank you, Tammy, for stepping in at the last minute. Appreciate that. So, Jesus and his disciples were leaving the temple. Now, they were reeling from a heady experience just a few days before they had entered Jerusalem and were met by crowds shouting Hosanna, who were waving, waving palms of celebration. The disciples, as well as many onlookers in the temple, watched as Jesus threw a monumental temper tantrum and knocked over the tables of those selling animals for cheap and, he thought, meaningless sacrifices. And they marveled as they watched Jesus engage in verbal Aikido with various temple scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees, and Herodians, offering up the greatest commandment, to love the Lord your God with all your hearts, souls, minds, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Then, culminating in the story of the widow's meager but total offering. 
Now we enter this tale today as Jesus and his disciples are leaving the temple. The temple was a monumental building inside a, a walled sort of fortress, a city. Its dimensions were staggering. The walls were almost a quarter of a mile long on each side. The temple was 10 stories tall, and in some places, the foundation went down over 65 feet to reach bedrock. The disciples were filled with excitement as they left the temple to begin the next leg of their journey. And while walking along, one of the disciples looks back at the great wall surrounding the temple, one that would have been about the same length of four and a half football fields, and muses with admiration Wow, Jesus, look at how big our temple is. Look how big the stones are that make it. What a beautiful fortress. To which Jesus, sometimes the ultimate buzzkill, said, Oh, those big stones, they're going to crumble. Apparently, this bit of news left the disciples mute because we don't read that anything more was discussed until later when Peter, James, John, and Andrew drew Jesus into a private conversation and in hushed voices queried when the destruction of the temple was going to happen and what would be the signs that they should look for to know that destruction was imminent. Jesus replied in typical Jesus fashion, by not really answering their question, but by telling them not to be led astray, to keep their eyes on the promises of God that Jesus had made known, to, to be secure in their faith, to practice their faith, to live believing those promises of abundant life are sturdier than even the massive stones of the temple. Now, it's important that you have a, some backstory to this lesson. The Gospel of Mark was written sometime between the years 66 and 74 of this era. This was a traumatic period for the people of Jerusalem, and even more so for those who were the followers of Jesus. The followers of Jesus looked for an immediate return of the Messiah. And a Messiah, they hoped, who would establish a new political order, one in which they'd be in control. It actually took many decades for the Jesus movement to understand the truly radical meaning of the present promised life abundant. In the year 66, Jerusalem devolved into riots where Jewish citizens rose up against Roman rule. Mayhem ensued. Romans crucifying citizens of Jerusalem, Jews slaughtering Greeks, and finally Judean nationalist rebels took over the city. All the Romans who could escaped. Those who could not were lynched. Four years later, Titus, who was later to become the Roman emperor, led a great army into Jerusalem. They captured the city. And by night, four stones were pulled from one of the city's great walls. The following day, the entire wall fell. Fires were started in the temple. Fires meant only to burn the holy artifacts, but they got out of control and laid waste to the entire compound. The gardens of legend and the beautiful, mighty buildings were gone. The brutal violence of this war is too much for me to speak of from this pulpit. But suffice it to say, when reading about the siege, images of the Khmer Rouge and the killing fields of Cambodia, the Turkish genocide of Armenians, the Hutu massacre of Tutsis, and the Jewish Holocaust at the hands of Nazis come to mind. I give you this moment of brutal history to emphasize the fact that the author of Mark wrote his words of promise, his words of hope, his words of warning, either 
in the midst of this horror or living in the aftermath of it soon thereafter. His dreams of ministry, his dreams of abundant life were not deterred. The first people hearing this gospel had been hopeful, but now their world was laid waste. They had been a comfortable, even wealthy people living in or in the suburbs of one of the most beautiful cities known to the world. Now all of them <clears throat> were the poor widow, and Jesus suggested they give all to a new vision of new life. Over the next several months, Courtney is leading the children and youth in an exploration of the gifts of the Spirit. She and I have been trying to come up with a handy-dandy, simple way to explain the gift of faith. Spoiler, we have not. <laughs> we can come up alongside it and describe it, but we cannot define it. Perhaps that's why Jesus spoke in parables. They're not simple black and white stories. They are nuanced, and depending on one's age, one's experiences, one's upbringing, gender, race, nationality, etc., one might see them a little different, and in different, different ways at different times of life. Yet the kernel of truth, with a capital T, is always there. Impressed as the disciples were with the magnificence of their holy temple, Jesus reminded them it would crumble. But the widow who had nothing before, but who lived in faith, still had nothing, yet her faith prevailed. We live with signs and symbols all around us. Wedding rings, traffic lights, money, crosses, stars of David, crescents and stars, flashing lights, service vests on dogs, you name it. There are signs and symbols that tell us how to behave, that give us a quick glimpse into history, that help us to know what's going on. We work, serve the community, and worship in beautiful symbols given to us by our Eastwood ancestors. In the heart of the Depression, those who came before us, those whose blood continues to flow in some of our members, pooled their funds from the sale of two properties and their own meager fortunes and bought a large parcel of land on Eastland Avenue. Then, amidst the Depression, at a time in our history when the majority of our population lived in rural areas with no running water or electricity, our congregational forebearers gave of themselves to build our education building. We kvetch about how few electrical outlets there are in that building, but seeing it in the perspective of a time that it was built, we should be amazed that there are electrical outlets in every room. Now these faithful followers bought this land and erected that building not only in the height of the devastating depression. They built that building in the shadow of the great Spanish flu epidemic of 1918 to 1920, in which Nashville suffered some of the greatest losses of any U.S. city. Eastwood Christian has stood tall, strong, and beautiful on our stretch of Eastland Avenue for 90 years. We served a neighborhood that has gone through many changes. We've supported numerous divinity students as they study and explore the possibilities of ordained ministry. We've helped formally incarcerated, those who have paid their dues to society, find a way back into it, where they can find meaningful work and lead lives full of all the things that all of us want. Love, friendship, meaningful work, purpose, and peace. We've been bold in leadership, 
having a co-pastorate of a husband and wife, when many churches would never have considered such a novel approach to pastoral ministry, let alone having a female pastor. We share our building with a variety of 12-step groups, people facing their addictions one day at a time, taking the next right step in front of them. We are a less than perfect but oh so welcoming in two Fridays a month, November through March, to those who have no place to call home. We've shaped thousands of East Nashvillian children as they pass through the classes of chickadees, bluebirds, cardinals, and eagles. This building is a symbol to Nashville. We even show up on the monumental new ceramic map of Nashville on the side of the Clay Ladies studio. Go look at it. This building is a symbol of the faith who came before us, and it remains not only a symbol for us, it is also a platform from which we live our faith, from which we serve our community. Today, this building is breaking as fast as we can fix it. In fact, one thing breaks before another is repaired. We all know that it is not accessible to everyone. It suffers from leaks and holes and rot. Its appliances are failing, and there are not enough outlets. But Eastwood is at a recalibration point. There was a time, another recalibration point 20 years ago, when some wondered if this congregation would close. Yet a new playground and efforts in outreach resulted in the vibrant, friendly, music-filled, open and affirming, pro-reconciling, anti-racist, child-supportive congregation that we have today. We are ready for big dreams and a wider arc of service. But we need funds to rebuild the inside of our education building so that we can make those dreams realities. We need funds to pay for ministry leadership of the congregation, the children, and our music program. We really don't have a deep, steady, firm financial foundation. We've not been able to save for the lean years. But just as Jesus warned his disciples not to lose hope and not to be dissuaded, we have spent years building trust and holy friendships. Today, we must spend time building a cogent plan for mission. How shall we put this incredible piece of property in one of the hottest neighborhoods, in one of the hottest cities in the US in service to the community, to the state, to the world? What does this education building need to be of service for the next 100 years? It's not just an elevator. It's ADA accessible hallways and doorways and bathrooms. It's up-to-date wiring and fire suppression systems. It's architectural remodeling that allows for no wasted space. It's a security system that makes the building easily accessible to the numerous groups we host while allowing the doors to be locked without personal oversight. If we had all those things, we could provide, if we wanted, a full day childcare program. And if we did that, would we want to partner with another organization or institution to help us make it the best in the city? Would we like to have a childcare program that perhaps could include the hearing and the deaf and hard of hearing as well? Beyond that, what do we want the front lawn to be? It's a radical thought. Is there a need for an urban farm in East Nashville? Is there an organization who could be the farmers for soup kitchens? Could we build workforce housing? And right now that means people who make about 40 to 60,000 or so, think nonprofits, people who work in churches or for the government. Triplex on the lot next to the parsonage that would be owned by a foundation of Eastwood? Could we develop a source of taxable income to provide cash flow for our ministries, a music school? 
Now that we've made it to a place where we are confident of our faith, confident of our call to ministry here at 1601 Eastland Avenue, confident of our holy friendships that we have built and invested our love in for years, we must build our resources to match our dreams. Now is not the time to grow discouraged by our lack of savings. Now is the time to build them. We build them not to sit on them, not to hoard them. We build them so they may match our dreams, so they may pull our dreams into even greater visions, so that we may respect the gift of our ancestors and give as abundantly as they did to us, to those who will be our offspring. There is a time in childbirth called transition. Now, it's a time when almost every woman thinks, says, or yells that she's finished, she wants out, and I promise you if she could, she would climb out of her skin and go home. <laughs> but she can't. It's not pleasant, it's messy, and it ends with the beauty of a baby she never knew she could love so much. We are in transition. This is an uncomfortable time, but as Jesus said, this is just the beginning of the birth pangs. Let us stand strong together and dare to dream bold dreams. Get involved in our committees. Bring your ideas for ministry forward. Reach out to community leaders, our neighbors, friends and organizations to learn how we may serve together. Let us build not on the past, but build to the future. Those Eastwood members in 1931 did. Remember, they put outlets in every single room. <laughs> Let us be that bold and 100 times more. With faith in a limitless God, let us take the words Jesus gave to his disciples and keep our eyes on the promises of God that Jesus has made known. Let us be secure in our faith. May we practice our faith and live believing those promises of abundant life are sturdier than even the massive stones of the temple. Amen. Let us join together in our hymn of discipleship, and the number is actually 586. And if anyone is interested in joining our congregation, you may come forward at this time. Good morning. Um, on behalf of the Outreach Committee, I would like to tell you about two outreach opportunities that are coming up this season for which you can be involved. Um, each year, Eastwood Christian Church provides holiday assistance to children and families 
served at Family and Children's Service. Family and Children's Service is a local nonprofit that serves families through the following programs. The Davidson County Relative Caregiver Program, which serves families raising relative children. Um, and I'll just say that during um, the last two years, this program in particular, um, many of the children in this program have lost their parents and or caregivers, grandparents, aunts, uncles to COVID and also to drug overdose. Um, so it's been a really extremely tough season for those families. Um, and we're just ask that we continue to keep them in our prayers. Also through the health access programs, which help enroll persons into the Affordable Care Act marketplace and other insurance programs. Additionally, it is open enrollment period right now, which has been extended this year through January 15th. So if you know families that are in need of insurance, they can um, go to the FCS Family and Children's Service, FCS Nashville website, and find out information about how to enroll. Also an extensive counseling program which works with families experiencing substance abuse, domestic violence, mental health issues, a 24-hour crisis line, and family resource centers in the schools. This year, Eastwood will once again be supporting children from these programs by providing holiday assistance. We will be collecting money and Family and Children's Service will be purchasing gift cards to give to the families. I know that this community loves to participate in this program and we are so grateful. I also know that persons love shopping for children and I am sorry, but once again this year we will just be um, collecting money to provide gift cards. I'm really hopeful that by next year we can provide gifts again, but um, due to continued concerns, it's just a little too difficult for our staff to um, collect gifts that way. Information on how to provide this assistance will be coming in our weekly newsletters and will be made available to you in the coming weeks. Um, but I'll just give you a little bit of a sense of how it's going to work this year. So you will be able to make financial contributions through the FCS Nashville website. Um, we will also be having ornaments that will serve um, as a symbol of a reminder of how you participated that you can take home and put on your tree at home. So those will be at the back of the sanctuary once we have our tree up. You can pick one up. If you don't get one here at the church, it will be mailed to you um, after you make your contribution sent to you in the mail. Um, additionally, this year, children and youth in our Eastwood program will be helping with the holiday assistance program by decorating stockings and stuffing stockings. So tonight, this evening, we'll be decorating stockings. We'll be putting some things like socks and fidgets and gloves and hats in them, um, and they will be given to some of the children as well. Another opportunity for your service this fall and winter is through our Room in the End program. Room in the End began in 1985 here in Nashville and works by partnering with local faith communities to provide a warm place to stay and warm meals to those who are experiencing homelessness. Twice a month, Eastwood is hosting Room in the End and will be providing for guests to come and stay and have a hot dinner and breakfast with us. Volunteer opportunities include a driver to transport guests from downtown to church, those to set up the beds and meal tables, those to, pre to prepare and serve dinner and breakfast, those to provide sack lunches, those to clean up, and those to do laundry. We're recruiting volunteers now, and this will continue through March. If you would like to volunteer for Room in the End, please sign up through the G Sign Up Genius link in the church newsletters or see Mark Cunnicutt. Thank you, Eastwood, for each year supporting these important outreach opportunities Please give as you are able so we can continue to support these and other supports which help those in our community. Come on up to the house The only things you can 
Decency is all that you lack. Come on up to the house. Oh, your crying won't do you no good. Come on up to the house. Come down off that cross. We could use the wood. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. The world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Come on up to the house. There's the light in the tunnel, no irons in the fire. Come on up to the house. And you're singing lead soprano in the junk man's choir. Come on up to the house. Does life seem nasty, brutish, and short? Come on up to the house. The seas are stormy and you can't find no poor. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. The world is not my home. I'm just passing through. Come on up to the house. There's nothing in the world that you can do. Come on up to the house. And you've been whipped by those forces that are inside of you. Come on up to the house. Well, you're high on top of the mountain. Whoa, won't you come on up to the house? And you know you should surrender, but you can't let go. Come on up to the house. Why don't you come on up to the house? Come on up to the house. The world is not my home, I'm just passing through. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. Come on up to the house. This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. Come on up to the house. So Steve Dickerson's name's in the bulletin, uh, but Steve graciously uh, agreed a week or two ago to swap with me. I'm sorry you can't remember that, Steve. Uh, there, the, uh, but, uh, but his name is in the bulletin there. Uh, he agreed to swap with me because uh, uh, 40 years ago, this coming Saturday, uh, I stood right here, and Sharon came down the middle aisle, and uh, we were married. So we thought I might be out of town next week. I don't know. We probably won't be. We're planning a trip later in the, in the spring. But, uh, uh, so we'll probably be here. But it was pre-planning to see if we couldn't uh, swap out a little bit. Sharon uh, said something a couple of uh, weeks ago about our anniversary and said, uh, uh, said something about vows and, and uh, uh, she said, I, I don't want to renew my vows. I, I, what word did you use, Sharon? Did you, was it reaffirming? Reaffirming. Reaffirming our vows and everything. Uh, so I, I just want to say uh, 40 years later, I would do it all again, and then some. So. I use uh, communion each and every Sunday as a time to reaffirm uh, 
Christian principles and, and spiritual things in, in my life. And, and I think, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we take time, I think, to do that on big days, right? You know, anniversaries or birthdays. We, you know, reflect and, uh, you know, Christmas is a time of, of reflection and uh, Thanksgiving and Easter, we, you know, we use those times uh, to reflect. But I think as disciples, we're, we're blessed with being able to, to come to this table and, and reaffirm each and, every, uh, each and every Sunday, each and every Lord's Day. Uh, I, you know, as I look out today, we, we've got a pretty crowded uh, uh, sanctuary today. And... and uh, I, I, you all are such a big part of, of my weekly reaffirming. You know, I've, I've grown up here and, and uh, uh, rubbed shoulders with saints and rubbed shoulders with you all, you know, still here with us today. Uh, and, and I see your lives and I see how you interact and, and I know things about you and you know things about me and and. Kind of like, it's hard to put your hands around it, as you mentioned, Janet, you know, you and Courtney's discussion. Uh, but you all are a big part. Uh, you're this table, you know, through, through Christ. So uh, let us prepare to come together at this table and celebrate and reaffirm uh, our love for, for each other and our love for our Lord and Savior. Thank you. Let's see. We're going to sing uh, our communion hymn, All Who Hunger Gather Gladly. It's number 419. Let's pray. Oh Lord, we, we do hunger and we do sing together. And we gather around this table to, to reflect and reaffirm and to, to wonder about the future 
And we know that future through your suffering and sacrifice holds something special for, for us. We break this bread and we share this cup and we smile because we feel your love, we feel your forgiveness, and we feel each other's love and caring. Thank you for this cup, thank you for this bread. In Christ's name we pray, amen. In the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, we gather at the table every time that we meet. We do this because on the last night of his life, Jesus gathered together with his fr closest friends and disciples. He took the loaf of bread, blessed it, and broke it, saying, this is my body, which was broken for you. After supper, he took the cup and he poured it. And he blessed it, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant which is poured out for you. As often as you are gathered, eat this bread and drink this cup in remembrance of me. The table is set. Wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome to share. Now let us eat the bread of life. and drink the cup of salvation. May the blessings of this spiritual food nourish our bodies so that we may live lives of hope and faith. Amen. hands and feet of Eastwood as you go to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. May your dreams be giant, and may your faith be even bigger. In God's name, you're blessed. Amen. adult will go with Courtney. The children can go play on the playground and not have to hang out in a boring congregational meeting. All the adults other than that one need to stay. <laughs> Oh. 
Okay. I'm gonna just go sit down. We lot, we're hot. I know everyone's anxious to get on with your day, but if you'll please bear with us for a little bit, we have some church business to discuss, and we'll try to be quick as well as answer any questions that you have. Yeah, I keep thinking about that Lyle Lovett song, you know, about everybody's hungry and wants to go home and eat. So we'll try to keep it short. But this is our big congregational meeting of the year. So.